Welcome to Home Buying 101. Today with me is Felipe Reyes of the FRE Group at Asian Associates. How are you doing today, Felipe? I'm good, my man. I appreciate you having me. So, Felipe, tell me who is Felipe Reyes. Tell me your story, how you got into real estate. So, Felipe Reyes is a Phoenix native, grew up here in the Valley, Fillmore area, Roosevelt area, went to elementary school at Kenworth Elementary right off 7th Ave in the 10, predominantly in the West Valley. So, Maryville, played soccer throughout that area all my life. My studio is actually down the street from where I first really touched the soccer ball. So played soccer my whole life, went to Grand Canyon University. So stayed very, very local. High school at Alwafria. I have a master's degree, a bachelor's degree, and I am soon to be a father of three with a beautiful wife. That's awesome. And how long have you been doing real estate? So licensed in real estate since 17. Before that, my family's been very heavily involved in real estate construction. So that was almost like second nature when I got my license. It was more of just to help family and friends, quote unquote. I didn't really understand it too much. And if I even went back, I might even be a lender, bro. I think <laughs> I like the numbers more than I actually like. Uh, to, the, to the DeLorean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've been licensed in 17, and now I have a team of soon to announce our third team member. My wife is my partner in it, so uh, we are a collective of six because I do have Dario as well that helps with a lot of this That's stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Well, uh, every week we go over the market, so do you mind go going over the market numbers for us this week? Oh, absolutely. So right now we are roughly... Just under 14,000. So I believe it's about 13,600 active homes on the market with about 9,000 pending transactions. So, what I always explain to anyone, and especially new clients, when they're asking whether or not it's a hot market, mm -hmm. if no house is made onto a market starting today, mm -hmm. in a month and a half, there would be no more houses to sell. So, what's the, I guess, what's the average inventory per month that we would need if everything just stopped? Uh, <laughs> In, in which about uh, seven thousand or or about eight thousand or how much? Because you said you were in a month and a half. So what's the a month and a half? We'd have no more homes to sell. Oh yeah. So what's the uh, what's so that's fourteen is a month and a half. So what's a month? I guess a month. We're seeing about last month closed with about seven thousand, okay. and now we're active with nine thousand. That's contract contingent. That's okay. under contract, and those are pending. So some of those will melt. But we're getting into the hottest time of the year, which is that spring, summertime, family starting to move. Average days on the market right now is 74 days. Median sold price is 437. And we're looking at the average listing price at 515 in the okay. Valley. And I know I track the numbers every week. And from last week to this week, on active listings, it's a drop about 465. The last couple of weeks I've been seeing, it's been a drop of like 200. So now this is almost triple what I've been seeing every week that I've been doing this podcast. So it's it's kind of crazy <laughs> yeah. the, how the numbers are working. Well, dude, we were at 20,000 just three months ago. Well, we were at 20,000 at the beginning of January, weren't we? Yeah, yeah so three, three months, months ago. ago. <laughs> right. So it's wild. But. So Felipe, thank you, of course, for being on the show again. The reason I wanted to bring you on here is we're at the end of the home buying process. So we've already had people on here talking about getting pre-qualified, buyer's consultations, searching for the home, getting a contract submitted and going through that process, final walkthrough, everything like that on the lender side. But I wanted to have you on here to talk about the final walkthrough of pretty much the loans already have been approved. So you're doing that final walkthrough. So kind of walk me through that. So the final walkthrough is instrumental in finding out whether or not they did everything that you're absolutely supposed to do via the Binzer, which you guys already covered, right? Mm -hmm. So now we're at the final walkthrough. We're walking the property. I always recommend at least three days before closing just because that gives you enough time if something wasn't done appropriately to still meet the close of escrow. So we're walking the final walkthrough. And I always recommend if you built a good relationship with the inspector, have the inspector come right back out and actually figure out whether or not those repairs were done. Have the invoices from the listing side provided just to assure whoever did them, we're making sure that they were done correctly. I, I, I didn't even know that you could have the inspector even come out again. Well, you got to build um, good relationships. Well, that's good. That's a good thing. We've got you on our side. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. So, of course, have you, has anything ever happened where they haven't done what you guys need to do and it just delays the deal a couple more days? Or Absolutely. That happens, I would say, one in every four. Okay. It's pretty common that, oh, I didn't know that this day was the day I 
give my keys over. I thought I got a couple more days. And that, I think, stems from just the industry itself. The industry itself is moved by 2% of the industry. So if 2% of the industry manages to do two-thirds of all the transactions in the Valley, these are agents that maybe do two, three, four transactions a year. And it's like, oh, I kind of forgot to <laughs> relay this over to my client. Of course. Yeah. I remember when we closed on our home in September of 2020, we did our final walkthrough and the people hadn't even moved out yet. Mm -hmm. Like there were still boxes. And it was just an added stress for us because we knew it was going to be empty by the time they handed us over the keys. But it's just an added stress of like, they should have already been done. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And it's a it massive investment. <laughs> it's a massive investment. It, we reiterated from the very beginning. It, it's one of those things that it's it's unacceptable, first and foremost, on the listing side, if they haven't managed to have that communication with the sellers. But it's something that you expect to go as smooth as possible because it's not an easy thing for anyone. No, of course. So after final walkthrough, kind of what's next on your end? So final walkthrough, everything went well. They did everything they're supposed to. Everything signed and completed, recorded. We get to begin the party, bro. In all mm -hmm. honesty, we're showing up with the photographer, the videographer, <laughs> the bottles of champagne, the <laughs> closing gift, absolutely everything. And absolutely, we even transitioned the last couple of transactions to give them a binder with absolutely every single document involved. Mm -hmm. And that's just to have that as a reference because I think it's super important because it goes so quick. Mm -hmm. The process goes quick. You bought in 2020. I'm sure it was a three-week turnaround. Three to four weeks. Yeah, it was quick. Yeah, it's very, very fast. We're traditionally used to take a month. Yeah. Now it's rare you still even see a month. And the good thing is I'm in the industry, so I know everything that's going on. But, like, that's awesome that you do that for your clients because they're not going to remember in – Three weeks, who their no. insurance agent is. No. They're, it's funny because, yeah, they deal with title so much, but half the time you ask someone like a year later, hey, who did you, who's title or who do we need to talk to about this or this or that for the title? Or, hey, we haven't gotten your check for home insurance. Who was your title company? Most people don't even remember a month later who they went and yeah. signed their life away at. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's, yeah, the thing. So that's good that you give them that binder because it, it gives them all that information at hand. Where they're not, like you said, it happens so quick sometimes. You don't even remember. No, exactly. Happens. Exactly. And yeah, just to have reference more than anything, it's the reference points. It's knowing who to call when anything comes up. And even for us, like, even though we turned in the keys, gave the gift, we're following up mm -hmm. two weeks down the road, asking how everything's going. So tell me what happens on, I guess, signing date. So just because a lot of people don't know, a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to get my keys after I sign. But that's not true because it still no. needs to record everything. So let's say, for example, today's the day I'm signing. What, explain to our audience kind of what happens that day. So signing day, you're pretty much signing all the disclosures and documents that loan that your loan officer already sent over to you if you're utilizing financing for the purchase. If you're not using financing in cash, then it's a lot less documents. But <laughs> you, should, if, you should bring one nice check. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you bring in pretty much your down payment at that point, whether it's a cashier's check or whether you're wiring it, you're getting all the loose ends tightened up. Now title has all the documents they need in order to send that over to the county, the county recording office to get that pretty much recorded into your name, which is also a process in itself. So once those documents are signed, title now has them. They send it over to the lending side. Lending then goes and gives their final approvals, make sure that every single signature was signed pretty much identical to every single page, which, I mean, you're going to be signing at least 100 docs. Once that goes and gets processed, then they send over the wire. Wire then goes and gets recorded, or it gets processed by title. Funds get distributed, and now you become a homeowner. So let's say I sign in the morning. Would I be able to get the keys in the afternoon? What's kind of like after everything's recorded? It's a possibility. It's a possibility. If you sign early enough, mints were delivered quick enough, and they were evaluated by the the lending near lender that that processed everything, then they can then wire it before the cutoff time. It title should be able to get that process through for the seller if it if you're working on a tight time frame like that, and it was you got the funds from the lender at one thirty. Uh, for the seller, they're not going to get the check till the next day or that. So pretty much, title is the one that tells you, "Hey, we recorded. You can hand over keys whenever you want." Exactly. 
So that's a good emo to guys we've recorded. <laughs> Absolutely. And I want to give them a call even before Title does. So I always kind of set that expectation too. That's awesome. You want to be the bearer of the good news. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're handing over keys, like you said. You're bringing the camera crew. You're bringing the champagne. You're bringing the closing gifts. Tell me about some of the past experiences you've had with that. I'm guessing there's tears, there's kids running around happy because they've got their own rooms or the pool. Absolutely. I, I think that's kind of that moment where it all kind of sits in. And one of the last ones was a, just a couple, I would say one in February that kind of stuck with us. And we recorded the whole thing and it was really, really cool. It was a couple who had been working with previous agents in the past and because of maybe credit not being where it needed to be or because the DPA was ridiculously high at the time, they weren't given the attention that they deserved. So once we had our first consultation, which was at the end of December, we got everything processed. I would kid you not in, I would say a month, pre-qualified, ready to go. And I was just in disbelief, like how they had talked to three, four different people and they were having so many issues. And not only that, it gets processed, they're good to go. They go and make a purchase, they get a 4.99, they take advantage of the interest rate that some of the builders are giving out. And just the sheer appreciation that we got at the very end of like, thank you for following through because we talked to so many people and they didn't follow through. It just kind of sets the tone of like, gosh, I gotta follow through with everyone because it's true, it's a massive, massive transaction. And it's the biggest financial investment most people make. So that one hit home because the whole family had been renting for, I believe, since 2011 or 12 when they relocated from California to come over here. And it was just time for them to finally make that purchase. And it just went so quick, so smooth once, every, once we had the conversation. And yeah, that was... And I think every single example that kind of sets its tone in my memory is an example like that where they came from someone else where they talked to someone else where they couldn't help them we got the things in we got all the pieces in place and made it happen and delivered like those i, I think is why i love to do what i do of course it's 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 helping those people that have just lost hope but yeah somehow or another you're gonna you're gonna make it happen so mm -hmm. you're gonna dedicate yourself to sitting there helping them out and figuring it out and making it happen one way or another if, if it's not Today, it's not tomorrow, it's next month or in six months, but Absolutely. you're going to get them in the home. Absolutely. <laughs> if they kind of follow what you told them to do and everything, of course, a lot of people are going to be appreciative because they've put in the hard work and they can see that you've put in the hard work. Absolutely. So they're going to be like, let's 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 get another house from her leap after this. No, and that's <laughs> the idea. No, we follow up and, and I think that's the, the biggest compliment you can get is someone referring you out to the next person. That or just reaching out to you in a year or two and say, hey, you know what, we've outgrown this house Put yeah. us in a new one. Yeah, and we, and those are amazing too. Just because you see the transition, you see the growth, the confidence in their purchase, moving into the next one. Like, oh, we've done this. It's cool, man. It's absolutely cool. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, yeah, it's good to hear that people are so appreciative. And I mean, it's just I've seen videos that you've put up and other realtors that work with you and everything. It's just the joy that people get from closing yeah. on a home. Because yeah, it's only thirty days, but those three days are like. The most stressful 30 days you yeah. have to you have to go through and it makes sense i mean people want to give up i'm pretty sure you've had people that they're at the finish line and something comes up and they're just like you know what no i don't want to buy anymore like they're there but they just they've been through so much that they just want to stop and yeah pretty much not cross the finish line yeah and i think we saw a lot more of that the previous years right where it wasn't the first house that they saw it wasn't the first house they made an offer on it was the 20th house mm -hmm. It was the 30th house. And I think when you finally get there and you make it into a realization for them, it's the coolest thing. Because I don't think if they, if someone wants housing, there should always be that sort of dedication to make it happen for them. Of course. Do you think the market's heading back to where we were two years ago? To what it was two years ago? Not essentially, but I think Phoenix is going to be resilient. There's a lot of economic growth throughout the valley. There's these warehouses that are popping up everywhere. You have the semiconductor plants just thriving in the East Valley, the North Valley. I mean, absolutely everywhere. I think Phoenix has a lot more jobs than a lot of other metropolitan areas. Mm -hmm. So Phoenix is going to, I think, hold and hold well and gradually grow. I so, don't, right, so right now it's still a good time to buy 
you can negotiate. And I think when you can negotiate, it's always a good time. Awesome. All right. Well, Felipe, thank you for being on the show. Let me ask you, if someone wants to start the process or at least start the conversation with you, where could they reach out to you? So Felipe Reyes dot fre on instagram or www.fregroup.io you can start the process there or just even give us a call directly so I what's mean, the number they should call that's 623-565-3433 and we'll get you started yeah. well thank you felipe for being on the show and if you guys have any other questions for felipe also reach out to our socials and of course if you guys have any insurance questions or any insurance needs of course reach out to us thanks for being on the show today no thank you for having us and shout out to green planet insurance man